Hey, what's up? My name is Nate, and welcome to another mini Bible lesson. For lesson number 23, we're finishing off our survey of the book of Leviticus. In our two previous lessons, we looked at God's instructions for sacrifices, priests, and ritual purity. In this lesson, we'll be looking at what's called the Day of Atonement and instructions for holy living. I first mentioned the concept of atonement back in lesson two when discussing Hebrews chapter four. Atonement boils down to reconciliation. As Christians, we're reconciled to God by Christ's perfect sacrifice on the cross for us. But his atoning work on the cross doesn't make much sense if we don't have a general understanding of this book. The Israelites followed an annual cycle of different kinds of seasons and celebrations, the climax of which was the Day of Atonement. This day marked the most important role of the high priest. With two animals, the priest would pray over one, laying the guilt of the whole nation on it, then sending it out into the desert. He would then sacrifice the other, bringing the blood of the animal into the tabernacle, into God's presence. Christ's atoning sacrifice is different in that he bore our guilt and paid the price for our sin, which is death, one time for all. Now let's look at God's instructions for holy living. In lesson 20, this was the, the first verse that we looked at when starting in the book of Leviticus. One of God's commands for his people is to be holy because God is holy. The fruit of our life is the evidence that we've made a genuine transaction with God. And up to this point, we've gone through a large portion of this book, which does not specifically apply to Christians. To interact with God, we no longer need priests to make animal sacrifices for us. We don't need to perform purification rituals. Jesus is our great high priest who's made an atoning sacrifice for us, and we're purified by his blood. But what about the instructions for holy living? Does it still apply? I'd say specifically no, but generally speaking, the Old Testament ethical teachings are affirmed by New Testament authors. Here's an example of a command which doesn't apply. It says, do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. But in contrast, the New Testament reaffirms the moral standards found in the Ten Commandments, with the exception of keeping the Sabbath day. The moral law found in the Old Testament, which is repeated in the New Testament, is what still applies to Christians. Certain portions of the Old Testament teachings of right and wrong are meant for all of life, for all of history. Here are the main takeaways that I want you to get from the book of Leviticus. The truth of our need for sacrifices remain. Jesus is our great high priest. The blood of Jesus purifies us. Jesus is our atoning sacrifice. And the New Testament repeats the moral laws which still apply. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching.